Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to our second module on sentiment analysis. I'm going to give you a brief introduction to sentiment and sentiment analysis, uh, and then we'll go into some data analyses as well using sentiment. Uh, so if you want to have a little bit more information about uh, our perspectives on sentiment analysis and how we can use sentiment analysis and some of the strengths and weaknesses of sentiment analysis, uh, please see this article from uh, 2017 called Sentiment Analysis and Social Cognition Engine Seance. Uh, it should be available uh, within the learning management system. Uh, briefly, sentiment analysis is basically the, ab the ability to say uh, or define or give emotions or sentiment to uh, some type of text. Uh, the most likely characteristics are going to be either positive neutral or negative. So in this uh, in these examples, uh, positive, something like my experience has so far been fantastic, with fantastic being uh, a word that has strong positive emotional um, sentiment attached to it. Uh, the product is okay, I guess, being more neutral, and the sport team is useless, uh, whereas useless has strong negative sentiment attached to it. Uh, there's a lot of things that sentiment analysis are uh, called, you'll probably hear it also called affect analysis or opinion mining. Uh, and basically the, the basic approach uh, is to take a dictionary of already existing um, words and their sentiment values. And those sentiment values may be positive or negative binary, or they might actually have some type of continuous value that's assigned to them. Uh, and then grab up the sentiment scores for the text, uh, average out the sentiment scores by text, and then compare uh, different texts based on these categories. Um, so most of the sentiment dictionaries uh, have both a key and a value where the key is the actual words, and the value is either a sentiment score or whether it is positive or negative in a binary fashion. We're going to be using tidy text, uh, just like we did in the introduction. Uh, and tidy text includes a number of sentiment analysis dictionaries that you can automatically upload. Uh, this is what the pipeline looks like uh, for tidy text. As we've seen before, uh, we bring in our text data. We're going to then unnest those tokens to create individual words. Uh, we're going to use a dpl dplyr or tidy r uh, to basically interjoin. Uh, the sentiment lexicon uh, based on the tokens that have been unnested. And then we're going to group by um, either positive or negative. Uh, and then we can have uh, summarized texts. And then from there, we can do visualizations. So uh, hopefully that pipeline or flow chart makes sense. Let's talk about some of the sentiment dictionaries that are available uh, in uh, tidy text. Uh, the probably most common one that you're going to find is the NRC lexicon. It's also known as a emolex uh, for emotional lexicon. Uh, it categorizes words into a binary fashion, yes or no. So this is going to be just categorical, yes or no. Uh, but the nice thing about it is that it has a number of different categories. And these are the categories here. Um, it has negative, it has positive, and these are kind of overarching categories that are going to contain all of these other subcategories, including fear, anger, trust, sadness, disgust, anticipation, joy, and surprise. The next thing, the nice thing about Emolex uh, is that although it is binary, it does provide a pretty good overview of the various categories related to sentiment uh, and has the ability to tap into these categories. If interested, here's a tree map uh, basically showing the number of words associated with each sets of these categories. Uh, and this clearly shows that you have a bunch of negative words, but these negative words are related to things like fear and sadness and anger uh, and fear or sadness. And it's important to note that for a single word, a single word in Emolex or NRC might be labeled as both anger, disgust, fear, and sadness. Or it could be, if it was positive, related to anticipation, joy, and trust. Um, so a single word can have a variety of different sentiments uh, that are associated with it. Uh, the two other uh, lexicons that are available in uh, tidy text are the Bing lexicon, uh, and this basically categorizes around 7,000 words into either positive or negative, so it doesn't have these variety of different sum categorizations. Uh, and then the AFEN lexicon, uh, which only has about 2,500 words, but each of those words has a valence score, uh, and that valence score runs between minus 5 and 5. 
uh, with negative scores indicating negative sentiment and positive scores indicating positive sentiment. So instead of just having a word that is either binary, uh, positive or negative, a word could also be neutral or it could be somewhat positive or very positive or somewhat negative or very negative. Uh, and this is a strength of the AFIN lexicon. Uh, as you'll see, if you read our 2017 paper, there are a lot of limitations to dictionary approaches, a lot. Um, but again, this is just an introductory course to natural language processing, uh, focusing on sentiment analysis. Uh, but here are a list of some of the more pertinent limitations. Uh, the first is that uh, there are most sentiment lexicons don't take into consideration negations. Um, so if I said something like, I am not happy, that would be labeled as happy because it would just pick up the word happy. It wouldn't recognize that the negation in front of it actually makes it negative. Uh, it doesn't also look at adverbs. Uh, so if I said I'm happy versus I'm very happy, it would just assume both of those are positive, even when you're using the AFIN lexicon. Uh, it generally looks at single words and not phrases, and we're just going to be looking at single words, although they're all, there are phrasal sentiment dictionaries available, um, and they don't control for part of speech tags. Um, so sentiment is most likely found in adjectives, uh, but this, these sentiment dictionaries will take any word regardless of, of the part of speech tag that it's found in. Um, so it won't care if it's a noun. Uh, it won't even care if it's uh, a function word like a pronoun or a preposition or any type of connective. And um, much research has shown that sentiment generally uh, is going to be more likely in adjectives uh, and then things like adverbs uh, and adverb, I mean, verbs as well after that. So that's what that's a brief introduction to sentiment analysis. Uh, we are going to then uh, move into actually doing a quick sentiment analysis uh, on our own. So I'll see you in the next recording.